I have this rigid vacuum it doesn't work anymore it just stopped working it was running fine and then it shorted the or uh, yeah it shorted it flipped the breaker on the breaker panel so I'm gonna have to take it apart and investigate see what the heck is wrong with it the vacuum comes apart I have removed a bunch of bolts underneath I'll show you in a sec but just for the visuals so the top comes off like so and that's all there is underneath there is a switch and the switch has two terminals here let's see yeah this way we'll call it good enough light there we go to this side, there's a blue and a red connector the blue comes here where that little picture is that kind of rectangular and where the letters are that's where the here that's where the red terminal goes All right. I'll show you what I mean by so here is the rest of the cord has been carefully removed from the lid it clips into places along the way everywhere and it's got a it's got a specific routing here it it clips in here and then one wire clips in here 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 and the other one the goes down there there's another similar clip there another one there and one more there as the wire goes and one more here of course as it comes towards the switch okay so when everything is removed this is how the situation looks like the vacuum the vacuum is in place except that I also removed from the underside all that the filter and this part comes off and mounts along the perimeter with those bolts they are all uniform in size so super simple just take out the bolts those I don't know eight of them whatever I didn't count and then you have a few more those bolts were here like oh, let's see. Yeah, there we go it fits the picture there 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 one up top there other side you get the idea and on top of that you have a few more there we go two more here two more there two more there and one more one more there okay and this here is what's making the wind this is the output shaft of the motor and when it spins another fan that you can see up top also spin so this is the shaft of the motor and the two wire the only two wire that exists in this whole thing comes to the motor white on one side and the black the power the, the hot with the blue and red connectors and goes to the switch you flip the switch then electricity flows uninterrupted from one to another through the switch and then the motor is powered so first off I'm gonna check I really don't know what's wrong with it I have different theories it may be dirt although I blew it clean with compressed air it still doesn't work it could be the carbon brushes they could be short I mean in length short the carbon brushes live there that's a little wire to it not the white that copper wire is the uh, pickup wire for the brush and there's one more on the other side and I really don't know what's wrong with it so they uh, the brushes might be short and not contacting the commutator I, I have to look at it I have to take it apart first I want to see if the cord is good I inspected the cord in its entire length there are no cuts no tears nothing that would indicate that the cord is wrong but I will check it I can check it this way unpowered with a continuity tester 
to see if there's continuity between that would be the hot and that or you can plug it in and do the same same thing continuity tester is safer so I'm gonna do that set the instrument this is just a voltmeter to continuity which would be let's see that one where the instrument makes a sound and uh, plug one of them here just like so there is continuity from the hot to the uh, part of the wire that goes to the switch so this part of the wire is good and the other one I would like to check the white one as well so I'm gonna hook it on the neutral here just through the hole just like so and on the uh, where this metal is exposed good I have continuity there still okay that's where the connector is at the end of the white wire alright so the cable is good or the cord is good although can you see that little cut here although not without imperfections sorry I don't know what that is so so that's why I'm checking this entire thing starting with the cord okay so far so good my next move take out the motor of course the motor doesn't come out as is I, I would need to probably possibly remove that one bolt that bolt doesn't just come out because you don't want this wheel to fly off in operation there's a hex key that goes into the center and whatever fits the outside and uh, that's how you remove that washer and then hopefully you can remove the motor from this plastic housing all right I get the tools and keep you posted I've removed the whole motor from the housing here and uh, underneath the fan there are two screws that hold the motor in place the screws are about this long there everything is Phillips number two and what worked on the motor here this is a half an inch half inch nut but the 30 half an inch is 12.6 millimeters so my 13 millimeter wrench worked on it literally flawlessly it's a little gappy but it's good and I held the center of the shaft there after meticulous clean out with this three millimeter wrench there and the hole is about that deep it's pretty good so take out the nut okay underneath there is a black washer like so metal and underneath the fan there's another washer that's this shape and let's look at what we have here the carbon brushes let me just get you here a little closer for the light somewhere here okay let's try this one so here's a carbon brush on one side you can see that it's spring loaded and it's long and if we can get a good angle on this one you can see the commutator segments I'll try to rotate it from this end of course it wouldn't let me do it okay there we go okay commutator segments rotating there and I've got a flashlight but it's really hard to hold everything you can see there the carbon brush making good contact let's see if I can do it this way almost there almost there if it wasn't any easier you know I would do it the easier way but there okay so you get the idea carbon brush making positive contact with the commutator segments there same on the other side of course with the other brush 
Uh, let's see, we're gonna see it through that hole there. I get there. Let's see. Light through there. Yeah, it works this way too. There. Okay, positive contact. And with compressed air, I cleaned out the commutator segments the best I could without without inserting a needle, just compressed air into the grooves. Okay, there should be no carbon deposits in the grooves whatsoever because that shorts the segments. So, after all the cleanup with compressed air, what I have here is I just mount this on this bench with the wood clamp that just fell, like so. Big rubber surface on the wood clamp, so it doesn't it doesn't harm the motor. Let's see. Let's plug this thing in and see what happens. I hope there's nothing else wrong inside, so it's just gonna work. All right. That's a 10 out of 10. I'm gonna run it for a while. Just and jiggle the wire just to see if there's any loose connection anywhere. Just just the wire because I don't want to touch the bare wire there or the bare wire there. So that's pretty much all there is to it. I just cleaned it with compressed air. After some experimentation with the motor, I found the cause of the problem because sometimes the motor was on. Sometimes it just doesn't want to work. Sometimes it does work. So, I found that the problem is here with the neutral pin. The neutral pin is this wider at the plug. And look at this one. It's got a loose pin or a loose tooth. It shouldn't wobble like that. It also has a lot of excessive play sideways. Alright, so this pin is basically broken inside. I have to cut it off somewhere here and put a new plug on. Super straightforward, but this is what's causing the problem or the malfunction. There. Alright, so I'm sure all the clean up and the disassembly did good to the motor uh, yeah it was totally unnecessary too but since we're at we're at it and I have it on the bench uh, just take a look at how the brushes work come on in closer and uh, you'll see that it's uh, arcing and sparking in normal operation let me just zoom in a little bit in just a sec and I'll plug you in Well, let's see some blue sparks. Alright, All right. so that's how the thing works when it's functioning perfectly. I've got the instrument here set up to measure some voltage at a couple of reference points. That's what I have here for a, it's a piece of nail for a switch. It's kind of loose but it holds together enough to do some reliable measurements. I'm gonna have a couple of spots uh, between hot which is the black and the neutral which is the white. Hot and neutral I'm gonna have 120 volts when it's running. I'm just telling you now because it's gonna be noisy but I'm gonna take the measurements so you can kinda see it. 120 between hot and this brush it's gonna be 120 as well between hot sorry between hot and this brush it's going to be 16.8 volts and between hot and housing it's going to be 33 something volts take a look i just i got to just get you here where you can kind of see the motor you can see the numbers can you see the numbers how about here there you can see the numbers there I'm gonna put my earmuff on 
and I'll just uh, get you see the numbers. I don't have a lot of explanation on that. You can take it apart and take a look at the coils and see how it works. And so those are my reference voltages. And a couple of quiet measurements. I selected resistance. So we're measuring ohms. Let's see. There are 2.2 ohms or so. That's just ohms. 2.2 or so. There. Measured from neutral there to the positive wire there, the hot wire there and a couple of measurements for continuity and of course you will have, let me just set it to continuity this way uh, one more click on that okay so that's uh, when we have continuity you have the this beep sounding so let's go to the hot here of course we have continuity here where we measured resistance we also have continuity here nothing here nothing to the housing we also have continuity here or to the wire itself or to the brush not to the clip. The clip is not conducting. Just, to, just to the brush. See, the clip is not, uh, not working out that way. And I'm poking it inside one of those commutator segments. I know we don't have a whole lot of light for this, but the commutator segments below. Each and every segment, you have continuity from the hot. To the commutator segment you know I don't have to check it one by one but sometimes you have to to find a faulty commutator segment the wire coil itself nothing I don't want to poke and damage the with this needle point there with the needle point I don't wanna, because the wire coil inside is of course varnished or coated so uh, there is no continuity between there is no short between these wire coils when everything is working as it should see it's only the end of the wire is continuous where it where it shows up there okay so that's a couple of these continuity and resistance measurements measurements when everything works all right now I totally have it apart that's uh, how it was kind of oriented when the measurements were taken. I added two of these wires back, so electricity or electrons enter in through one end. They come through the hot there. The hot is hooked up to this coil basically. You can see that the end of the coil is terminated like so, just bare wire, same in there and the varnish is scraped off at the end so that these little connectors can have a solid contact so you can see power goes through there it comes out here that's where this brush was hooked up and now the brushes are spring loaded so they meet in the middle I'm trying not to there you can separate them I'm trying not to chip the edges of it or of them so where there this brush was hooked up there and then power goes through that one 
Okay, so that would be this one here, power goes through that one, through the commutator segment, comes out on the other side, goes in here, comes through there, and sorry. Alright, so power goes through there, through that coil, comes out to this brush here, which is connected that way, and then goes through the bar brush, through the commutator segment, out the other brush, the other brush is connected to that terminal there and and through uh, through this wire coil it goes to the neutron so this is the stator and the rotor part here you can see nice clean commutator segments and this was in here like so of course it's held in place by this bearing at the end just very simple doesn't need lubrication or anything but of course I will add one drop so this was there this was there and everything is held together with these two bolts so that's all my motor story that's how it works so you can make sense what the voltages and the measurements were this way on the rotor part on the fans I just cleaned them with this rag and that's all the carbon dust that came off from the brushes so in other words it's in the milligrams range very little that's basically good to go I'm gonna add a drop of lube there and the edges are a little rough because that's how it's been uh, stamped and bent how it was made you know this whole star wheel fan was just with a cookie cutter stamped out and just the the uh, fan blades were just bent with a simple twist all mechanized the edges are a little rough I'm gonna try to make the motor quieter I'm gonna file these microscopic burrs along the edges that you can see there I don't know if it's gonna make any or much difference but I just do it I got the time it won't make them louder there this blade I just filed of course the metal filings will be all there for the motor to ingest so it's gonna be gonna have to be cleaned up meticulously from my from my hands and from the surfaces with some more compressed air so that's before filing okay the camera is kinda in the way but that's getting there yeah that's about that's about all it takes on that side when the camera is not in the way I kinda look a little more fluent with this there that's done on that one and you can see the small metal filings on fallen on the next blade making a little sparkle or whatever so I try to keep it on my hands and off of these rotating surfaces and off of the commutator gaps where it can uh, and will sh short eventually so it's gonna have to be clean with compressed air when I'm done you're looking at the surface pitting the surface wear on this bronze bushing that's holding the tail end of the rotor so if I rotate this plastic piece you can see that black pitting this is a brass bushing here that black pitting on it is everywhere and so I have half a drop or whatever one drop of this assembly lube just just about that much on it there and I'm gonna this is not how they go together but this is how they go together ah, maybe I can put it in there is this way and just spread the lubricant I haven't taken measurements so I don't know I don't have the specs so I don't know what the diameter of the shaft should be and and I don't know what the diameter of the inside diameter of the bushing should be it's pitted it's worn and I'm just trying to make it less noisy it's it's gonna be worn it's not gonna be perfect but 
I'm just trying to make it quieter as well. All right, assembly wise, this part with its four terminals, one, two, three, four, are completely reversible, so it doesn't matter where you attach the black and the white as long as they are diagonally opposing each other so either this way or this way and you'll you'll be fine and this part as well this is how it comes it's symmetrical so it doesn't matter which way it's hooked up as long as the two brushes are diagonally opposing each other so if the black and the white wires are here and then the brushes need to be hooked up here and here likewise if the black and the white wires are here then the brushes need to be hooked up there all right enough said all right let's put this one together and you can maybe you can't really see but you can see now that between shots I'm meticulously cleaning my hand free of all debris and filings and any kind of stuff because I don't want to introduce garbage into the motor okay so far so good and now we've got the brushes and they're really easy to separate you can either pull it by the tail or wherever you can let's see how do I want these wires I want these ones there and this one there so okay now you're not gonna get a super nice angle on this one because I just need to make it work oh it's spinning on me sorry guys but there you can see the brushes move out of the way there so I'm gonna do this and okay I just realized I have to Take that one off, and that one off, sorry, and that one got bent in the process a little bit, alright, there, the eagle has landed, there, yeah, this is there we go let's see the brushes have full contact okay now I need my flashlight to show you this but you can see the commutator surface and you can see the edges of the uh, the uh, brush there lining up with it so it's everything is together properly alright yeah. bolts back together there wasn't really much torque on these bolts just, just to and there that's about lots and there and that's plenty good now I'll get the your face, let's see, it's spinning, it's not grinding the commutator brushes, I can see it's, there it is flashlight, I can see that it's a nice fit, they are back where they should be, there. Um, retracting it a little bit okay you got the idea and I'm gonna hook up the white one there the black one on its opposite corner and then this one there and there and this one there okay and we are good to go for a test fit with my or a test run with my little nail of course I haven't changed the plug yet but uh, this is just a
test run so it should be good so the plug is still the old wobbly plug but let's see did it get any quieter does it even work at all that's 10 out of 10 maybe a little quieter uh, maybe I'm just imagining things but uh, perfect assembly